greater time in the year than March Madness. Oh, for sure. You have baseball starts. You've got college basketball. You've got teams getting set for the NBA playoffs. You've got football deals getting done. My Philadelphia Eagles. There's more, and my New York Giants. <laughs> well, which they, we haven't been doing that well lately. I, I must admit. You got Saquon Barkley. Yes, and he's, we do. He's a phenomenal player, and I and wish him well. At, and he played at Pitt, just not in the NFC. He East. played at Pitt. He played at Penn State. At Penn State, after decommitting from Rutgers. That's right. I, I I'll forgive him for that. We need no, to figure out a way. No, to we keep, won't. No, we will not. <laughs> no. no, we will not. And I will not forgive him for going to the Giants, but that's another <laughs> conversation. All right. But this time of year for sports enthusiasts like myself, there's never a lack of things to watch on TV. By the way, there's more money bet on during the NCAA March Madness tournament than any other sporting event in the country. And before I was able to win my case before the Supreme Court to allow sports betting. All those those bets went to organized crime run sports betting rings or offshore internet sites. Now New Jersey is seeing the benefits. Atlantic City has come back to life. We've saved our racetracks from closing, all because of sports betting. So I want to get to your part of sports betting and the legislation and your fight. And it was a 12-year fight? 12 years, yes. I want to get to that. But before we do that, let's talk to the listeners about the history of sports betting in Nevada mm-hmm. and why it was only in Nevada. Sure. Well, um, in the early 1900s, uh, Senator Bill Bradley uh, led the uh, charge in... Uh, a in, legendary athlete himself. Absolutely. The best college basketball, college basketball player uh, ever to come out of New Jersey. He played, He's in, a the, good he played in the Ivies. But he was good uh, in any event. Uh, so... So uh, he got that through Congress, but they carved out a special section for Nevada and Las Vegas. Um, So fast forward years later, a friend of mine, Rudy Garcia, was arrested placing bets for himself and a handful of friends. He was hanging out in a bar in Union City. Hey, I'm going down to place a bet on the Giants or the Eagles, whatever. (laughs) Hey, put a bet in for me. So he had a handful of bets to put in. Uh, and it was a sting operation. So he got busted uh, because they thought he was a runner and part of the operation. Charges were dropped. Meanwhile, his, his mugshot was up there. It was embarrassing. And I said, this is wrong. He could have gotten on a plane and put those bets in, at, in, in Las Vegas. This is so wrong. Uh, and then I saw also how important sports betting, because Atlantic City was dying. It was dying. And uh, on life support along with our racetracks, and that's what got me going. And we talked a little bit before the show, Atlantic City concerns, jobs, revenue. He's all tied into the reason why sports betting shouldn't be prohibited in New Jersey, correct? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Atlantic City lost 15, can you imagine that? One city, 15,000 jobs. Five casinos closed. Uh, with both internet gaming, which I also support, uh, sponsored, uh, and sports betting, now it's 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 alive and it's a year-around destination place. So, twelve-year fight. Start at the beginning. Take us through it. Oh boy! So, first of all, I wrote to my uh, congressional representatives, many of whom are my personal friends, to change the law. Didn't even get a response. The NFL is so powerful, so powerful. Um, And then I went to the National Conference of State Legislators. You would think, because they represent states' rights organizations. And I couldn't even get a resolution uh, introduced uh, to repeal the law. So I said, I got to go to court. And I did what lawyers do. I did some legal research. And I came upon the Tenth Amendment argument. Uh, the one that ultimately won, that the federal government cannot tell a state government what they can and cannot do. They could have made sports betting illegal, but then Las Vegas wouldn't have it. So what they did was got away with saying states cannot authorize sports betting. I lost at the uh, uh, twice at the Court of Appeals, uh, went back and forth, back and forth, 
Uh, and of course, as you know, um, it's it's a over twenty year law passed by Congress. District courts, court of appeals, are very very reluctant to overturn that. So I had to get to the Supreme Court. When I finally got to the Supreme Court, we won. So a quick digression: a parallel can be drawn in that Tenth Amendment argument that you had made with marijuana. Now, can it? <sighs> No, because I'm sorry. No, <laughs> sorry, no, no. Con, sorry to disagree, counselor. No, no but, but <laughs> no, because no, because the there because marijuana is uh, designated a uh, controlled dangerous su- substance federally. Okay, so uh, they did that. I'm not supportive of it, but they did it right that time. If they had said states cannot. Uh, permit uh, uh, use of mar- marijuana, then it would have been a, a, a 10th Amendment argument. So important distinction because we're talking about federal control over states. Exactly. And that's why it's important for people to recognize the freedom that we have as a state is something that is not just granted to us. It's, it's in the Constitution to, of the United States of America. But as a lawyer, you know... That's not enough. No, we had to isn't. fight for it. Had to fight for it and suffer eight defeats before before winning and had to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. So why were people in New Jersey opposed to sports gambling? Wait, 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 wait. Well, the, I, I put a referendum on the ballot that won overwhelmingly. Um, unfortunately, some of the casinos in New Jersey were opposed to it. Uh, because they were ruled, they're owned by, most of them are owned by Nevada casinos, and they didn't want to want to lose their um, their monopoly. Uh, but I overcame uh, that opposition, obviously, ultimately, But and that wasn't going to deter me. Deter me, no way. But I don't think people realize that the Nevada casinos were willing to sacrifice Atlantic City and everything that Atlantic City is just to protect their fiefdom. So what else is new? I mean, right. the... the they took the profits from Atlantic City and allowed Pennsylvania, New York. They invested it in other states that had drew, drew away people from Atlantic City. So, you know, look, it's the bottom line for them. That's not there. That's not for me. Who am I to judge? Uh, but I am to judge to do something about it, and I did. And you did in grand fashion because you won. Thank you. It's always nice to win. Winning is always better than losing. Absolutely, <laughs> for sure. So you took on Vegas, you took on the... Took on the NFL. You took on the NFL. Let's talk about that. That was the big one. I mean, they fought, and they're so hypocritical. The NFL was against uh, sports betting in America. Meanwhile, they played four games in Wembley Stadium where people were betting in the stands on their games. They played a game or two in Mexico City where sports betting is allowed. But they didn't want it in America unless they got a piece of the action. What role did the NCAA have in any of this? Same, the NCAA bully. It's all in the book. Feeding the. I thought you were gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk book. about your book. Okay. The NCAA tried to bully us. You can't bully New Jersey, right? That's right. Anybody from New Jersey knows you can't bully us. So they said no tournaments in um, in New Jersey as long as we're challenging. Uh, the ban on sports betting. And my response was, when we win, when we win, the only state that you're going to be able to have your tor- tournament in is Utah, because everyone else is going to follow our lead. So the listeners don't know, but you almost just hit me with one of your books <laughs> called Beating the Odds. There we go. And Beating the Odds is a book that you authored about your journey through mm-hmm. legalized sports gaming. Correct. I don't want to give up all the goods on the book because the listeners need to go out and buy the book. Thank you. And you can buy it at the Lesniak Institute.com. Excellent. And it's cheap, $15. Can't go wrong. You, you can't go wrong. Yeah. And for people like myself who are enthusiasts. Well, I'm going to give you an autographed copy. I, and I will And I'm going to give Joe, it. Joe, you get an autograph. Uh-oh. No, actually, I'll, I have one in the car. I have to give one to Senator Troy uh, uh, Singleton? Steven Singleton, who uh, introduced me to this show. Absolutely. Um, and I'd be happy to carry it for him. Sure. So you gave us a quick teaser um, before we, and we'll come back to your book in, in a couple minutes, um, but you've got a book signing tomorrow. At, right? uh, at Resorts. Uh, it's the uh, Elite Eight Games, uh, two to four at the Resorts Casino. 
I'll be up at the Meadowlands. It's far drive from Philadelphia, but at, at the Meadowlands um, racetrack for the final game with a book signing as well. And the final game is that's Monday, Monday, April. Monday, Monday, night, Monday. April 8th. April that's 8th. It. Yeah. So there you That'll go. That'll be so a big day. For our yeah. listeners, yeah. Monday, April 8th, 2019. That's, Meadowlands. That's the Meadowlands, but Saturday, which is to, which is not tomorrow. I forgot about that. Sorry. Yeah. So, <laughs> but but you're getting around and you're getting exposed and you're having an opportunity to speak to people in real time and uh, talking to them about your book. Um, what a journey. Um, so, before I leave your book now, and we'll come back at the end of the show. Did I miss anything from your book? I want, I want to talk about how Governor Christie tried to stop me three times uh, until I finally uh, got him on our side. I like to say that I, I brought the ball to the 10th uh, uh, to, to ten, and goal, to the goal line. He pushed it over the top. But, okay. But he's tried to stop me along the way three times. So tell us about, and, and I'm very curious to hear about that. When we come back on break, we'll, we'll get into mm-hmm. your dynamic with Governor Christie on truly beating the odds. But tell us about your relationship through the legislature with Governor Christie. Not good. <laughs> He's vetoed many, he, many, many, many of my uh, important pieces of legislation, uh, criminal justice reform legislation, uh, trying to convert uh, abandoned, f- uh, 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 boarded up, foreclosed homes into affordable housing for folks. It's vetoed a lot of my uh, animal protection pieces of legislation, including our ban on gestation crates, which are terrible. Th- we, do, we don't get along all that well. As a matter of fact, I think he called me a lunatic once. <laughs> I well, some would take that as a compliment. I, and I certainly do. Very well. And Senator Raymond Lesniak is our special guest here on the Adam Malamut Show. As you consume the radio program today on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, name of the book, Beating the Odds. More with the Senator after the break. 